So, first of all, it was amazing that song because really what spiritual unknowing is is how to describe for grown ups what she was singing about that kids seem to know. Oh, wow. So amazing. Um, so, uh, and I've I started using the word spiritual unknowing because I would always say to people, you can't know it, and people don't like that. So, yeah, it's a way it. to basically become open to learning, to receiving, to clear your mind, and um, really letting those beliefs about yourself sort of be put to the side so you can be more of who you are. And really this is about receiving from God. Receiving grace, receiving abundance, whatever it is that you're receiving. Um, it's not a new idea, but I like the my term is somewhat new. So Socrates said, the only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. And when I um, first started studying spiritual things, I had this teacher who was a Sufi master, and everything I would ask him, he would always say, you don't need to know that. And it was very frustrating. And what I've come to discover is that not knowing, it is important about knowing in spirit because there are things so big and so beyond what we can know in our mind, there's always more. It's always, and in one way, when something is very different from what we know, it's kind of easy, but when it's subtly different, it becomes a bit harder. So as soon as you don't know, you are open to receiving grace and wisdom. You are open to learning and new experiences. And Eckhart Tolle says, being at ease with not knowing is crucial for answers to come to you. Which seems pretty obvious, and that's what I'm talking about. So it is a place that allows you to be truly you, the best of you, the very best of you, beyond your thoughts, beyond your fears, beyond your regrets, and beyond your inhibitions. Is spiritual unknowing faith? Yes, it is. It's, what is faith? We believe in something that we really don't know. And in there, allowing that room for faith is what I'm talking about. Um, so, there are other things. Being childlike is something that's unknowing. When a child approaches things from a place that it wants to learn, um, I was very fortunate when Sophia, the first time she walked, I had my camera right there, so I had a video of her walking the first time. It is great to see the smile on her face and just how she's exploring and, you know, and you can see a few steps and then she's like questioning whether she can go and then she just keeps going. And in that, that balance between knowing and not knowing is part of this. So obviously we're not abandoning everything we know but we're leaving room inside of in our mind, in our being, in who we are, that there can be more, that there can be a, a miracle, there can be amazing stuff that happens in what we know. So what was the last time you experienced spiritual unknown? When you saw something and you didn't quite understand it. Um, I, I wrote my doctoral treatise about breathing, and I'd say about a year ago someone told me this very fun thing that if you stick your tongue out and you breathe in, it makes it almost impossible not to take a full breath. And I thought that was such a fun thing, and in there I was like, wow, that's something I didn't know. And it's, you know, it's a funny little thing, but it's kind of a fun thing. And um, let's see. So, it is looking and believing that which is not known, the spiritual unknown. Faith is a beautiful path to God. Does having faith mean doing nothing? No. It means get ready, prepare yourself to be open. You open your heart, you open your mind, you open your being, you open your very essence to God's wisdom filling you. Be more open, more than you can know, better than you can imagine. When the blessing comes in, the Spirit comes in, God comes in. Let go of what you know and make room. How can we prepare ourselves for this place? Here we're lucky. We have unity. We have the Christ. We have each other supporting us. A lot of people don't have that. But you do your work. 
meditate and pray and whatever other kinds of spiritual practices you would do, but it is preparing this place. Um, a lot of meditation is just focusing on your breathing, like a Buddhist type meditation is designed to clear your mind. And you certainly like that is the same thing. So Lao Tzu said to attain knowledge, add things every day. To attain wisdom, remove things every day. So part of this process is letting go, letting go of things that you think you know that are not serving you. Um, one of the big influences on my life, I was a total jock when I was a kid, and I learned a lot of spiritual tools playing basketball, basically. So that thing of getting hot and playing sports and doing really well is very similar to the spiritual experience. Um, even though I knew of this process from the time I was very young, when I was a teenager, this book came out called uh, The Inner Game of Tennis, and it just it was like, wow, other people are doing the same thing that I'm doing, and it really changed the tone of sport since then. So he, Timothy Galloway, Galloway says it, how can you be consciously unconscious? When a player is in the state, there is little to interfere with the full expression of his potential to perform, learn, and enjoy. So he's talking about playing sports in that place of they talk about it being unconscious, which is not a, fra a phrase people use very much these days, but in those days that's how they talk about it. The next part is going into the childlikeness. So Charles Fillmore did say, it is the childlike mind that finds the kingdom. So just think of the times when you see children exploring things. In doing my research for my treatise, it, one of the things I came across that really was in, I thought was interesting, in kindergarten, it was like 85% of the kids are breathing naturally, like the way they should be, taking full breaths. By fifth grade, that number switches and only 15% are. So sometime in there, we go from this spiritual, childlike unknowing to thinking we know, doing what our parents are telling us, and not living that natural being. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to think this is my childlikeness, because my favorite quote that I came across was actually from a fictional character. Uh, uh, data from Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> and it, it, I liked it also because I was thinking about writing this paper and I was watching Star Trek The Next Generation and this quote came out and it seemed like a synchronistic the most elementary and valuable statement in science, the beginning of wisdom, is I do not know. And that is such a true thing. When you want to learn something, if you think you know it, you're probably not going to learn um, So what are some times that you've experienced this recently in your life? And just say so yell at me. I know for me, dancing sometimes, listening to music. How about you, Karen? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mary shared some things. What are some of the things you talked about in your song, Mary? Just the sparkle in your eye, the feeling of not knowing. No one? Okay. So what's the question? What are some times you experience spiritual unknowing, that childlike innocence of looking at something in awe, whether it's looking at the stars, listening uh, to music? Uh, singing. Singing, yeah. right. Right, when you let that magical thing out inside of you that our mind can't even comprehend. Um, the, the next part that for me is personally what always been my experience is this loving in my heart, the desire to discover what that's about. Um, and I have a Jalaluddin Rumi quote, where love is the telescope of the mysteries of God. Whether love be from this earthly side or from the heavenly side, in the end, it leads us to God. Whatsoever I say, exposition and explanation of love, when I come to love itself, I am ashamed of that explanation. Although the commentary of the thoughts makes all clear, faultless love is clear. So as I said, 
for me, that has been the driving force since I'm very young, like wondering what is that about. And it's led me to some amazing experiences. It reminds me of a story I heard in my Sufi days about this prince that was kidnapped when he was very young. And even though he didn't really remember it, there's part of it in the back of his mind. The only thing, only sense of where his home was, was he heard a church bell. And so he was kidnapped by gypsies and he was traveling around. And the story is he learned a lot of great things. In that story, he had to learn how to make tents, and, you know, which would not apply today. But so he traveled around the world learning things that actually ended up helping him later on. And all of a sudden, during that time, he just really yearned for his home. And obviously the analogy is that's his spiritual home. So, and all of a sudden, one day, he's somewhere and he, start, he hears his church bell and it activates something inside of him. I always like the story. It's a real good comparison to your spiritual journey when you don't quite know what it is, but when you hear it, you do know what it is. So he was able to go home and take his birthright place as being the leader of his people, and in his travels away from home, he learned all the skills that he needed. A quote by Albert Einstein, the most beautiful experience we can have is the mysterious, the fundamental emotion which stands at the cradle of true art and true science. Um, so part of what keeps us from doing this is a fear. There's part of our consciousness that's designed to maintain the physical level, and when the spiritual energy comes in, it is definitely not physical. It starts to take us more into the spiritual. It can be kind of scary. There can be times it's shaking your body, it can shake your thoughts, it can change your life in a way that sometimes is not very much fun. But it is leading you, a part of you, your inner wisdom, your inner knowing is connecting to God and leads to the miraculous things. In, there's part of all, we're all trying to listen to God and hear what God is telling us. Yes? Would you speak up a little bit? You can't hear me? Okay, how's that? Yes. Okay. So, and what I discovered is that we want God to speak in our language. Now, it makes sense if you speak English, you'd like God to speak to you in English. If you speak Spanish, that seems like a basic thing. The truth is God speaks so uniquely in your individual language that we have not learned how to hear that. So our inner experiences, our feelings, the images in our mind, these are all part of God's language. It's just we still don't know how to translate that from how we're getting the information to something we can understand in when I was, I actually wrote a paper about this a while ago, and what I discovered is, even when I chose to talk here, I really know nothing about this. There's very, normally when I say to people, mention spiritual unknowing, they go, oh yeah, they get it. So I don't really have to explain it too much. But in writing a paper to um, put in a newspaper that I write for sometimes, um, I realized I needed to write more than just one sentence. And part of that was I started to describe my experience. Um, for me, it's funny, colors is part of my language, and it's funny because I'm colorblind. So when I'm doing spiritual things, even when I work with clients or when I was writing, I start to see all these colors. I'm not exactly sure what colors they are, but um, so, you know, Mary, sings, and so those, you know, in, in writing music, that's God's language coming through. Uh, I also, as I said, learned a lot through sports, so a lot of mine was very physical. Uh, when I was, so my first thing I got into was yoga, and it made sense, it was very easy to go from sports to yoga to into spiritual stuff. So God is directing us always in our very own, very own individualized language. And that's all. So we're going to do the meditation now so everyone can get comfortable in your seat.
Father and Mother God, we ask for the clearing. We ask for God's love and God's light to fill us, surround us, and protect us. We ask for the light of the Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit to come present at this time. We ask for any angels, masters, and beings of light that can assist us in this process of moving into the spiritual unknowing, to clearing our minds, to being open to God's love, to God's will for us. Uh, just take a nice big breath. So that you can put your hand on your belly and just to make sure that you're taking a nice full breath. And then you can breathe into your heart center in the center of your chest. And allow the energy in your heart center to expand. You can imagine it as a ball of light, or you can imagine it like a heart we draw for Valentine's Day. It can have a color to it, or it can be clear. And just allow that to start to expand. We talk about visualizing, but you might just feel it or know that it's happening. And in that, allow your love to come present for yourself. Think of something that you really love in your life or something that you've done. You might think of yourself as a child and love that child. Now you can imagine a nice loving light. A lot of times it will be purple. Just coming in to your expanded heart center. Sometimes it'll be orange, sometimes other colors are fine. And keep breathing and allow that energy to fill you, to heal you. If any thoughts come to mind, if that's fine, allow the light to heal your thoughts. In the highest levels of spirit, there's very little resemblance to the physical level. And one of the nice things about that is we sort of get to create what's there for us. So you can imagine a beautiful place in nature that you like, a beautiful home, uh, or both. Something that would just be ideal for you. It could be the beach. And just imagine yourself there. And then you can imagine walking with Jesus or whatever other spiritual master, Buddha, Moses. And you can feel or know that you're receiving the direct transmission of wisdom knowledge and love. And take another big breath. Now you can allow yourself to get some words that might come with that and see what the Master is telling you, a blessing for yourself. Just imagine yourself back in your perfect place there without the master. 
now at this time will anyone, any situation in your life that you know that could use a healing and blessing, you can bring that to mind. It could be a friend, just a situation in the world. Start to feel yourself in the chair. Take another breath. So be it. <laughs>